Sorry, I, I forgot that's, that's all right. to do that. But I think this might um, be interesting for some people that so as we um, head down this this path of when editing. And Photoshop first started with putting the clouds in. And everybody's going, oh, you know, that's not right. It's not pure. And I started looking at some of my travel photography and I'm going, you know, that there's no clouds. It's just a blue sky. And I right. put clouds in it and I go, <laughs> oh, this is, that's what it really, you know. But see, and, and in my mind, I I never I never replace clouds in anything. I just spent three weeks in Europe, and I'm they are what they are. That's how it looked like when I was there. Uh, it wasn't no, sunny and blue skies every day, and it was crappy one day, and there were no clouds, and it was gray one day, and that's just what it was. But so you know I'm not what? trying to like pretend that it was something that it wasn't. When and unless I'm selling that picture for somebody right. who needs the clouds in it, then I'm yeah. not going to spend time doing that. You know. Yeah. But we, yeah. We, we have I that guess that's a difference like like in real estate the majority of the photographs i take of outside the house it's on a day where there's no clouds mm -hmm. it's just a clear blue sky right because that's the majority of our days down here and when you put clouds in there that makes that house look so right much right and i and i understand that like from yeah. a commercial standpoint if you're shooting a building for somebody if you're shooting architecture yeah. for someone or real estate that way you know the, the skies make it look better. And I understand, like I said, I, you know, I get that, you know, for, yeah. for commercial purposes, yeah. you know, you're trying to sell something. Yeah. Um, it, but for my personal, uh, it's, it, it's a personal taste yeah. thing too. I, I just don't. But, like that down here, we have beautiful sunrises and we have beautiful sunsets. And, you know, I take houses out on the ocean or on the bay and they have beautiful, you know, well, I don't want to go out there at midnight <laughs> and take it. I'm right. taking it at 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm going home and I'm putting that stuff in there. <laughs> it's so much easier. Yeah, it's I, just, I, find, I find, and I this I said quite a few years ago, actually, probably 10 years ago, it would be uh, the girl that took um, some event photos for my husband and I, she did senior portraits and stuff. And I kept looking at it and I'm like, they all have the same exact background, right? Yeah. And back in yeah. like 10 years ago, it was really popular to have the sun flare kind of coming yeah. in like from yeah. behind sort of. And I'm like, they all look the same. Yeah. And I'm thinking, quit putting that in there. You know, like yeah. that's not what it looked like when the person was there. It enhances it a little bit, but change it up or something because eventually yeah. they all look the same, you know? You definitely do. You don't want to use the clouds that are in Photoshop. Take no, right. Yeah. Your own cloud. Your own. yeah, right. Right. And, and, and make and, sure and that they're, they're in the same location or area yeah. where they look like they belong. You yeah. know, you can't take a West Coast right. sky or a sky from the mountains and put yeah. it on a on a beach scene because, you know, if right. you know clouds, I mean, if you know the sky at all, you're going to tell yeah. the difference. And maybe people don't. Maybe the majority of people don't know the difference between no. the clouds look like here and here. I, I, I don't think know. that's probably Maybe. it. And, and, and photographers, <laughs> photographers can can pick out if you put yes. one in there and the oh, direction yeah. of light, right? Or, or right. And most people don't. Yeah. I mean, sunrise. the majority of the population right. doesn't pay attention to that I think, thing. I think you're right about that. But I, I'm sort of in in Lori's camp of, and, and again, I'm so, so I'm speaking more on the side of you know doing landscape photography and that is, you know, when I go out, my idea is to sort of you know, capture the experience, capture what my right. eyes saw and, and do that versus, okay, let me come back and see. I, I say that, but I still will go through some of the steps within, you know, Lightroom, yeah. Photoshop and, you know, whatever and so forth to enhance it a bit, but right. I have not been yeah. doing the sky replacements. I know others that do. And, and you know, just being in pretty heavily involved with a couple of clubs that comes up in discussion in that when it comes down to like competitions, image competitions and so forth. Yeah. And that is, you know, what level of, um, you know, how, how much of the image should be what you Real, captured in your unquote. camera versus right. how much of it should be, you know, what you did to, I mean, processing is one thing, but then the, the next step is, um, you know, replacing a sky or right, right. You know, right. some of the other kind of things yeah. or whatever. See, and that, so, that, that just, Len, that just goes right into this whole artificial intelligence thing. And I don't know if you, right. if you like the whole Adobe Max thing is going on right yeah. now. Yep. And yep. almost everything that they're talking about is artificial intelligence. 
Oh, right? I mean, yeah. there's courses and they're teaching courses on how to do things and whatever, but the overall, like, um, I just wrote up the Adobe Max sneak peeks article this morning and every project that they're working on, because sneak peeks tells about things that they're working on that may or may not happen. They may or may not be future features in products or f- future new products or whatever, but every single one of them has to do with artificial intelligence. Yeah. Well, and I just it's downloaded. Just yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. I downloaded crazy. The, the new Photoshop and new, new Lightroom. I got the new Lightroom. I don't use Photoshop enough to even look at what the new, new I, features are. So I, I opened it up and I went, wow. Yeah, I, I use for real estate photography, I use the heck out of Luminar. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, the, the yeah. Neo, do you use the Neo HDR? Or you know what? You... I'd like to use the Neo HDR, but. <laughs> I, I use I use the what is it the AI? The I still use before. oh uh, just Luminar yeah uh, yeah yeah because I still use actually their uh, Skylooms or Luminar whatever they are I guess Skyloom are they still Skyloom technically yeah um, I still use their Aurora HDR when I do uh, photography like that indoor or uh, real estate yeah. type photography but now Neo has just added. They just added, added their HDR. Where when not the HDR, but they added to where I could set up my um preset that I could control the preset. Right. Where before I couldn't. So oh, that's okay, why okay. that's hmm. why I was using the other. Okay, okay. Because I think that they did just add a, a, a module, and I can't remember what they're calling those. I don't know if they're modules. Yeah, they, I, don't, I don't know what they're calling Neo, them. They, they just added w- where you can do your own preset. Okay, but they also added a, a. I think I thought they added HDR not too long ago when they didn't oh, they have did. it before the merge. They did. The HDR merge. The, the merge. Yes. Right. Okay. But you That's know what? what I thought that they did. I, when I first started shooting houses, I shot HDR. I haven't. I haven't tried it yet. So. But uh, with Luminar. I don't have to. You don't need to. You almost don't need to anymore, I right? I don't need to. Because you, I, you, you get the, the dynamic I, range is already there. Yes. I, I can sure. pull it. It's just a matter of pull pulling it out. out. Yeah. So, so I I don't shoot HDR anymore with, with real estate. Nice. That's um, interesting, too. Right. It, right. I, I mean, you, you can, I take, um, I, I set it up on um, a- Aperture Priority. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I set my a- aperture um, to right around um, 12, 13. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and that and that gives me my plenty depth of field. Right. And I have uh, Godox, big, the um, one that sits on top of the camera with the big, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, but it, it it's the bigger flash, the one the one that has the external battery pack with it. Oh, okay. That I have to attach to my tripod. Okay. And that and that gives me plenty of light. Right. You know, um, and it with with Luminar, I can see out the windows, and that's a big thing with the view. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I can use a flash. And still see out the windows, and still say um, that you don't blow the highlights. Yeah, the, right. Yeah, which, so, so, so I I've got it set up in Luminar. I just upload the photographs, and run it through the pre and, and run it through my presets. the The longest part of the whole thing is uploading it after I've edited them. So I've got a hundred photographs. Oh, to the real estate, to them. No, I need to upload it to change it into a TIFF or JPEG. Oh. Yeah, after I've edited it, then I've got to upload it out of Luminar into Lightroom or- Okay, oh, okay. Like a catalog somewhere else. Yeah. So are you are you importing? Do, are you still using Lightroom as a base, or are you using yes. Luminar as a base? Oh, okay, so you're I, you're I editing Lightroom. from Lightroom, and you're using Luminar as a plugin, basically. No, well, no, I don't. What, oh, this I is did. how I do it. it it's weird. Uh, I I did it that way. I started off that way. So now what I do is, um, on my filing system, I've got the address of the house. 
That's where the original photographs go. And then underneath that, I have a folder for Luminar. And then underneath that, I have a photograph for choices. So when I put the photographs on the computer, I upload them all to Luminar. Okay. And I upload them into Lightroom. So they're in two places. Ah. Okay. So then I edit them all in luminar and after i after they're all edited in luminar and i choose the ones i want to use then i export them into that luminar photograph luminar folder underneath the address of the house mm. in light makes sense well right. it, it's on the it's on okay the all right then i bring it into light lightroom look at it again and choose again and then i have to minimize the size because i i'm shooting in raw so i got a larger file right. and you export it right and it, the realtors don't want those large files. right 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 they, they want a small file so then i have to reduce it right so my big time consumption is downloading it from luminar into the luminar folder so why why do you upload it to both why wouldn't you upload strictly like to lightroom first and then just use luminar as a plug-in because then all your images are still in one place instead of having your images in two places well because i don't know why in the beginning i did that because what i could do after i was in lightroom is i could click 10 photographs that i wanted to edit in luminar and then i could go and edit those 10 photographs in Luminar, and it would drop them back into Lightroom. Right. You can't do that anymore. You have to do oh, one really? photograph. Oh. You have to do one photograph at a time. All right. I'm gonna have to write this down because now I want to know. <laughs> well, right. because right. because is it because hmm. are they, you know, is Luminar going away and they're gonna stick with just Luminar Neo? And is that a capability? Uh, Can you do that in Luminar Neo? Can you batch process in Luminar I Neo? I tried it. You can batch, and I know they're continually updating yes. things with Neo lately. But when you, when you are in Neo and you are in um, AI, is it AI? Yeah, yeah, when Luminar are, AI. When yes. You a, when you're in AI, that's the one I use. You can batch process, so I can edit the one photograph, then click the ten photographs, and then say batch them or whatever I have to, whatever the terminology is. And it applies the edit to all of those photographs. Right, right. Right. And that's great. But you, you then, said, but interesting, but I'm then, to look at that. But I can't, but in doing it in Lightroom, I have to do one photograph at a time. So that becomes time consuming. Right. Oh no, I I get that, but yeah. it, it's not logical to me that that's how it works. And well, again, and I don't it, know what their I don't, what their plans I, are with how they're doing things there. And I the asked moment. them about that, and they said, "No, we we." I, I think they said we never did it, and I said, "Yeah, you did because I can do it." <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna check it out because that's I mean batch processing is important for a lot of people. You right. know, a lot well, of yeah, people it, batch portraits if, and event photos I, and all if that i could if from from lightroom if i could upload 20 photographs into ai or into neo right right and then edit them and then as i edit them then they would drop back into lightroom yes oh that'd be fabulous yeah you should yeah right that'd be fabulous because here again that's my hour right in dealing with 100 photographs or 80 photographs, it roughly takes 45 minutes to process oh, yeah. them and turn them into a TIFF right. into the folder. Hmm. I have to look into that. I'll, uh, I'll let you know what I find out. Hmm. Well, I mean, I'm not, I use Luminar, I use Neo every now yeah. and then, but I'm not versed in it. Like, I don't know all of it, what it can do. I have idea of what it can do, but I don't use all of the everything. Yeah. So, was well, the um, restriction in Lightroom or is it in uh, Luminar? It's in. It's in Luminar. Can you batch? 
you can batch to another program out of Lightroom. Yeah, but so if you I'm, if you select so like if you yeah. if I want to do an HDR in Aurora HDR, I can choose you know I choose my three images and take them out and then I export to H, to HDR right. to Aurora HDR. Yeah. If you're going to batch process something, you should be able to choose those five or however many images you want to batch process, and say export or edit in right when you go to edit edit oh, in yeah. Luminar Neo and it should take them right. all over. Right. It doesn't. It but used you're to. It doesn't. Yeah. It used so to. I, I'm going to look that up. Let's so see I think what I can find out. Yeah, I think I think it works like so. If you're going to batch process out of Lightroom over into, um, let's just say like uh, Topaz Denoise or something like that, I think you right. can exactly as you described, Laura. Right. What well, it should it should work in in any right. software. Right. I mean, any right. software that edits something, you should be able to batch edit. Right. Right. Like yeah, I said, I mean, people who shoot weddings and people who shoot yeah. events and portraits, batch editing is really important to them. Yeah. But, you know, I, I used to shoot HDR all the time, and, and I loved it. But when Luminar came along, quite frankly, you don't need it. Right, right. You, you really, I mean, with the editing there, you, you can take a single photograph and make it look exactly like an HDR. Right. right. And do, do you find that you have, oh, do, do you find that you have better capabilities of, like you said, you know, doing that and not needing HDR and using Luminar versus say doing you know, your 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 processing like that not using HDR but using say Lightroom and it's presets in Lightroom versus presets in uh Luminar I guess is what I, I find the presets in, in Luminar a lot better than Lightroom okay um and but back to HDR when I quit when I was trying to decide what I was doing, the realtors liked the Luminar single photograph better than the HDR. Interesting. Sure. It, sure. it is. They, 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 they said it just, it looked more real. That's, that's, and that makes, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because and it, I, and it depends on what HDR programs you're using. Like, like Laura, you said you. I, I was using Aurora. Yeah, that's okay. what I use. If I do, I don't shoot yeah. much HDR, but that's what I, I usually I use. I was using Aurora. Right, and, and I I'll like it. Check it I, out. I, yeah, I have to. Look I like at the it. look, but, but, but here again, if I can do it faster and end up with right. just good as photograph. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, and and then when Luminar put the clouds in. My, my <laughs> like, sure. and, and especially for what you're doing here. right right so dave dave yes are you loving your new camera now i am uh, what did you get i went to olympus i have a uh, the oh. olympus, uh mark three omd yeah um and you know, I, I got a pretty good deal on all of the uh, Fuji uh, lenses and stuff. And I've got basically uh, four lenses that will meet most of my needs. And then if I want, I found out that I can take the, um, oh shoot, um, Lens Baby lenses. I can send them back to Lens Baby and for 40 bucks, they'll uh, exchange it. So it'll now fit the Olympus. Wow, that's not oh, bad. Nice. That's oh, oh, that's it. <laughs> That's really, That's really amazing because you know most days yeah. now everybody's like, no, you got to buy new. They're going to sell you yeah. new stuff, you know. Well, That's, I, That's awesome. I contacted them and said, can I trade these in? Because you know they're not right. Oh, no, no, just send them to us. It's uh, for forty bucks a piece. We'll just take all out because they're not. Wow. Uh, you know, there, there's oh, they're no not electronic. Yeah. Now, right. So it, it, I'm sure on their side, that's it's a pretty easy thing, and forty right. bucks leaves them with a profit. But it, it's sure easier. Than my trying to sell and buy and right oh that's awesome because yeah, that's one of the challenges of changing camera manufacturers yeah right from one to the next right. it's, uh -huh. it's it's not just selling this camera and buying the new one and whatever price differential you have there it's the other stuff right it's lenses yeah. being the big part of it but all right. the other attachments all yeah, the other flat my flash i had to sell yep, off exactly. one and yeah. a different one because it wouldn't you know it's like why why yeah, through the lens why why does it have to be matched to the camera? <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, you, and the you different hot shoes could... that are on. Yeah. But I, I uh... think for a young person coming into photography, 
I think that that is the hardest choice and the hardest piece of advice that, that should be given a new person. What camera to get? I know, and people ask it all the time. And to, well, I always tell them to go try them out, either rent them or go to the camera store if you still well, have one in your area, you know, and, and feel how they feel in your hand. Yeah, you know, you, you have to, because otherwise you're not going to be comfortable with, with it. Yeah. You know, I you, have to, you have to, they, they buy used, you know, if or you're that, not yeah. Sure, yeah. buy a used one, you're, you're not going to get hurt that bad. Right. You, know, you sell right. it yourself or, you know, M right. MPB is just amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On, you know, the price they give you back on your equipment when you, uh, they do better than KEH, which KEH has always been my favorite. But yeah, I use them. Yeah, they didn't get and the deal. I, I think another thing too, when you're telling people about what to get or whatever, it's like tell them not to go out and buy 15 lenses. Like, right. go out and buy the camera and one lens, and use that for a while until you decide that it's the right camera for you. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. if it isn't, then what? Then yeah. you're then you're sitting there with like three or four lenses that you can't use if you decide you don't want. You know, you have all this extra investment yeah. that you could have you know, not had. It's like, do I drive a Ford or do I drive a Chevy? Yeah. You know? Or right, it is. It, it is. is. I, the, uh, and if you have more money, you go buy a BMW, I, you know, or whatever. I mean, laptop. a Leica. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then I'm going to have a Leica in my hand. <laughs> yeah. The screen broke on my laptop, so I had to make another decision. And I and I left the world of uh, Windows PC for the first time in 40 years, and I'm now on a Mac. Yeah. Um, oh well way to go welcome to the world <laughs> of computers I, I i'm liking it but you know there are things i miss with my yeah. pc i could take it apart i could put memory in I well could, i did that with my lap with my macbook i did my i put my own memory in yeah you just have to be brave like that's oh, right you just have to go okay if i unscrew you this and i take the back memory. off my laptop this, this yeah. is that new series with the m1 process oh yeah. right okay I and just I got, that got the M1. Oh, the, I hear that is awesome. It is. And, you know, I, I'm working on a 14 inch screen. I was on a 15. I don't really feel like I'm missing anything. Right. Uh, the screen is just so good. Uh, I did the same exact thing. I went from a, uh, the, the lap, the MacBook 15 inch to the MacBook 14 inch. That's what I'm looking right here on. And, and I do have a, a separate monitor, a BenQ for some of my editing and that, that I have as a, as a side monitor. But as far as the laptop, yeah, the, the the fourteen works fine for me. And oh it's, yeah, well, I, I, I'm old. I, I think like, I'm on a thirty-two, or it might be a forty-inch. <laughs> I have a twenty-seven-inch monitor, but I have a seven. I have yeah. a. I don't know what my MacBook is. Fifteen, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, my MacBook's a thirteen. Yeah. Hi, Patty. Hello, Hi. hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Nice meeting you. You too. Thanks for joining in. We're probably going to wrap it up in about 10 minutes, but we've just oh, been. It's been recorded, our, right? Uh, most of it, yeah. I didn't quite start at the beginning, but. No problem. <laughs> we've just been talking about Dave. Dave switched camera systems, and we were talking about real estate photography and. Yeah. Right. And replacing right. clouds and artificial intelligence stuff, which we kind of yeah. got off that subject, but uh, it's. Uh, uh, it's I have a, crazy, I think. Yeah. I was just curious. Uh, has any of you, um, Adobe Max 2022 is yeah. uh, right now. Yeah. And anybody has uh, been able to uh, register or take a look at some of this? Photography? Yeah, I, I'm registered. I haven't, I've watched a very little. I always register for stuff and then I end up never, never watching yeah. things. But um, I've peeked in at a couple of things here and there. Good, good. I have done uh, uh, quite some time, um, probably on the 18th and a little bit yesterday. My uh, observation was Photoshop. I work with uh, uh, Canon 5D Mark III. Mm -hmm. and I'm also, uh, you know, finishing up my certification in photography still. But um, one of the things I work with Lightroom, Photoshop, and uh, uh, what's the other one uh, for the edits that actually you recommended? Um, Topaz. Topaz. Oh, Topaz. Topaz. And one of the things that I observed is in this Adobe, wow, it's it's great. But if you are in the creative mode, like you are, <laughs> you will be a little bit disappointed because some of the stuff is already done for you. But if you're well, not that's, the creative yeah. part, then- That's part of the argument against going so far right. with the AI, right? right. There you go. There you go. Perfect, perfectly said. 
AI, the cloud. One of the uh, positive things that I did notice is that um, if you guys are into uh, certifications or keep studying, keep yourself updated with the cloud uh, certification or cloud um, information because that is one thing I did see that if you want real time action and uh, instead of uh, wasting time, then this is your Adobe Max 2022 conference. Yeah, no, I, I just, I, I said that I, I posted all the, the information, I posted stuff this morning on Photofocus about the, you know, what they're working on and things, and it all has to do with artificial intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> We're so I guess, you know, as a design, even as a designer, though, I don't know if I was a graphic designer, it would help, I suppose, because you're, it, it kind of makes the possibilities really endless mm -hmm. and infinite. What yeah, you can do is crazy. It's just, it blows your mind. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm old school and I, you know, me but, too. Oh. but I just, and I see where it's helpful in some aspects. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, we we said how before, just when you were talking about um, shooting for documentary or for like for newspapers and stuff, everything is instantaneous. So yeah. that means quicker. That means now. And I if know. that's what artificial helps to do too, you know, that's part of that. Yeah. Or if, uh, if, right. if, if, for example, if um, like Sunday I was doing a community service, I was doing volunteering for, you know, a charity. And uh, you would be amazed. It used to be before, okay, I'll give you the uh, the photos in five days or something like that. Right. Now they want them the next day. And so right. uh, I can see the pro and the cons. It, you know, I, I, in Photoshop, I could just see, oh, now I don't have to do this. I, 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 right. You know. And it, it would depend on the use. Like in a case like an event or something that's, oh, yeah. um, especially if it's volunteer. I mean, you still want to give them your best work, right? Um, yeah. But if it's not something that you would typically spend hours editing anyway, you know, like we were talking about batch processing, right? In an event situation, you could go and take your event that has possibly all similar lighting and, yeah. and batch process it. It doesn't take as long, you know, yeah. so now you can throw it somewhere and the AI takes care of it and you almost don't have to do anything anymore in that situation, <laughs> which I, I have mixed feelings about, you know, but if you're someone like personally, the stuff I do, I consider creative mostly, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I'm not documenting stuff. I'm creating art. Mm -hmm. And if I want to do something, I don't want somebody to like some machine, uh, <laughs> machine and I can't think of the, the word that I'm trying Awkward to think of. Or cool. You know, I don't, I don't want it to do that for me. I want to make those decisions, yeah. you know? So, you know, is it, I don't know. And, and some of it, I think, is too far. You know, yeah. I saw a thing. I don't even know what it was on. I saw a post or something about how a company had all artificial intelligence generated headshots of people who don't even work there. They're not even like they don't even exist, these people. But oh. here's our employees or whatever it was. And I'm like, that's not even right. That's just creepy. <laughs> right? right. It's creepy. Not so I, I don't know. And then, you you know, now my head just went to the whole, like, how how can people scam people? Like, it's easy enough as it is. And now they can scam people by, you know, mm -hmm. creating who knows what to show something that's reality that isn't actually real. Yeah. So yeah. there's that whole aspect of it, too, I think, that could be an issue. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and we have to keep an it's, open mind and, yeah. uh, you know, it's amazing. It I mean, te the technology is amazing. It's incredible what's being done. I mean, look at look at the the what do you call it? Telescope. Look <laughs> at the difference, huh. right? Difference in the oh. images of the um, pillars. What are they? The pillars of creation or something um, from the the Hubble, the Hubble oh. versus the one out there today. And mm, right. it's amazing. So, I mean, technology is amazing, but yeah. It's also scary. <laughs> yeah, you I know, think. it's just a, an observation, and I try to do it for the last three years. Uh, not that I get really ambitious of learning the whole thing, no, but um, I just want to keep up with my nephews. <laughs> yeah, well, <I'll... laughs> and with my uh, new generation that is coming, and uh, right. I see them every Sunday, right. and you know, it's a dinner conversation, and most of them are in technology, and that's where Auntie Patty, fifty-eight years old, and I, work, <laughs> I work in the IT department at a bank, and I I'm trying to keep up with you guys. Right. You know? So right. that is, uh, and since I see 
uh, you know, this this beautiful photo. Sorry, I, my camera is not really up or going right now, but um, you know, it kept me um, motivated. That's what I right, said. Right, right. To, see, to think, you know what? I should really start uh, continue because sometimes I just want to say, you know, I want to quit this college. I mean, I'm too old. For this thing. But <laughs> no, you're not too old. You're never no. too old. Thank you so much. Thanks for allowing me to put some. Yeah, people. yeah, yeah. That's what that's what it's about. You know, we all are here to learn from each other and help each other out. Um, and hopefully, you know, I, I I'm still gonna try. And we're gonna try and do some different things next year with the hangouts. I think uh, do some yeah. more presentations where people teach things. Um, Great. And uh, we'll see where that goes. But. Michael Reno can actually teach us teach me how to do this black and white beautiful background that he did. Yeah, that's I love that. I have to come there to shoot that area oh, right the there. Union that, station. that station is so cool. Oh that one, that one at night. I want to come to LA. <laughs> nice. the, um... LA is. I was just out at LA. Well, it's been it's been. When was I out there? October? No, oh, this yeah. is October. I guess I was there in May. Yeah, I saw your photos. Oh. Uh, Michael, is this uh, composite? No, no, no. That's that's just a one single shot. Um, oh my gosh! Uh, in the evening, like at, at night, uh, Union Station is kind of in the downtown area. And what it was was I used to. So now I'm cool. retired from the the corporate banking world and that, but I worked up downtown Denver and <clears throat> would throw my camera in my uh, briefcase every day on the the way to and from and uh, so sometimes if I had a good good light good sunrise shot or a good sunset shot as I was getting ready to catch light rail which is you catch it there at the Union Station here this downtown I would uh, find different I would miss and, my and train this is just one <laughs> one composition there there's a lot of different compositions you can get at that oh. within oh, right you, in that spot so oh, it's so yeah I, I need that's that's on my list that that station <laughs> yeah my well you get list. you get so many good ones from uh you're you're in Chicago and everything that you get from the city and your outdoor architecture ones are amazing there. Nice. And then I remember, like you said, the ones that you got from from L.A. were that was that was a quick and it was a quick trip. I, I wrote an article about it because, I mean, we were at Griffith inventory inventory Griffith Observatory for like 20 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. and we were at we were at the Hollywood Bowl for maybe a half an hour and we were at the longest I spent was two hours and that was the broad and Disney concert hall. But those were like like massively on the top of my wish list for ever and ever, you know. Um, but I was actually uh should have been out there this week at mm -hmm. uh Adobe Max, but oh okay. didn't happen. So <laughs> anyway, well I'm gonna wrap things up if you guys are um good with that. I appreciate you guys joining and I appreciate, you know, there was a lot of good information shared. Um that's kind of what we'd like to do more of. Um you guys all all new cameras and software and we talked about uh the whole editing and reality and not reality and <laughs> artificial intelligence and um it was good conversation so i appreciate you guys showing up back to you all thank right you we'll uh, see you guys in the community sounds good thanks, thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.